he started right here in Trinidad, right? So, and I think, I think that shapes um, as well how I contend with language, plus having Pearl as a mother. Yeah. <laughs> you talk about um, your upbringing, your um, psyche, the split level uh, upbringing, split, split level uh, psyche, and at the risk of them, um, interpreting that. Uh, is that close to the mulatto consciousness? Is it a dogla consciousness? Uh, what exactly is the split level consciousness that you talk about as an, an essential part of your life? Funciona Pearl want to kill me for that story, right? Um, my consciousness has always, okay, I grew up in a household where my father is a different ethnic group from my mother, a different ethnicity from my mother, in that he is Trinidadian and my mother is Tobagonian, right? And she is citing first, right? That daddy is Trinidadian and mommy is Tobagonian. And once you have met a Tobagonian person, you understand what I mean by a different background. Um, but my father is also of East Indian descent and mommy is not. Um, and uh, there are all kinds of things. I grew up in... I was born in Port of Spain, according to mommy, but then I grew up in central Trinidad. Spent a number of my formative years in the home of my father's family. Then when I was about seven or eight, moved to live with my mom, right? And it was two different, it was two different languages in the household. And growing up, it, you know, moving from one language, one type of culture to a different language, different type of culture, it was a bit of a shock. And I mean, split level there has all kinds of resonances. One, it is a split level home. And my mother worked very hard to build that house. She would tell you all the time, a tote brick on my head, Rhoda, a tote brick on my head. Um, and then split level in that I, I was from a generation of children who divorce was a big thing when it happened, right? Because it wasn't happening regularly in households. Um, my parents got divorced and we had the whole split weekend thing. So mommy during the week, daddy on weekends, um, which, which led to its own tensions and, 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 um, and traumas and then split level in terms of the different cultural backgrounds. And I really mean it more so in the sense of Trinidadian background versus Tobagonian background. But the Trinidadian background at that point in time would have been more Indo than anything else given where my, given my father's ethnicity and where he came from. But daddy was you know, Christian Trinidadian, not Hindu Trinidadian. And so you learn to navigate two worlds. And in learning to navigate two worlds, you were exposed to lots of different things, lots of different um, nuances, layers. You have to learn to speak two languages, for instance. In my aunt's house, I would, it would be a tower. In mommy houses, a platin, <laughs> right? And you dare not use the wrong word in the wrong household because nobody knew what you're talking about, right? Well, I guess um, uh, the beauty of that is that you can now use both words in the book, and they have now found, they have found a common home in your fiction, uh, which is very uh, liberating in the sense that you move smoothly from one ethnicity to the other, and you create a new ethnicity, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And I think that if, if anybody asks me anything about this book, as you have already alluded to, it is a book about Trinidad and Tobago. It's not. African is not Indian, it's not, it's just all of the space that exists here. And I think uh, you need to be uh, congratulated for such a, a fantastic uh, achievement. I think she deserves a round of applause. The other aspect of your work that um, 
fascinates me uh, is uh, it's not just start with a negative, but it's not a negative really when you get to it. So listen to it to the end. Your stories are very bleak. There is no doubt about that. Your stories are full of pain. Your stories are full of betrayal and disappointment and so on. But what I find most uh, liberating in them, is that the second time I'm using that word? Okay, I will use it again. Uh, what I find most um, um, interesting, most exciting about them, is that you are able to create beauty out of the pain uh, through your use of language. That beauty out of the pain is what I think uh, recommends this book to me uh, first and, and foremost. How difficult was that? Especially when you look at some of your, your humor, the acidic nature of your, some of your humorous line, and some very, very subtle lines uh, of, of humor, and how did you get that balance between this, the tongue-in-cheek kind of type of humor and the, oh, listen, you, this is pure F happening. <laughs> I was, I, um, the person that taught me creative writing was very sarcastic. Um, so, uh, so I had a very sarcastic mentor, one. But the other thing is, I think, I think that sort of humor is very much a part of this piece, right? I think that's, that's one of the things that Trinidadians could take any situation and make a joke out of it, right? And it has translated now, I think, from Calypsos, I think our Calypsos now are even more bleak than any, uh, more bleak than my humor in that they, they're kind of dead. But it has, it's translated from the Calypsos to memes. When you see what we meme now and how we meme the things that we meme, nothing happens here and a minute later there is not a meme circulating all over Facebook. And, uh, and so I think, that, I think that it is something that is inherent to, to the space um, as a result of as a result of all the things that have mixed and made up our culture and because I'm so focused on l observing the culture, absorbing the culture and then, you know, kind of as much as possible trying to reproduce it, I had to infuse the writing with that and then I also think that it is, um, that that sort of, what's the word you use all the time, Vlad, that I am mordant, is that it? Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. He, Vlad tells me all the time that I am mordant. St. Lucians have their own vocabulary, because I never get anything like that. But um, yes, I think that you know I have this kind of dark humor, but at, you know it's, it 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 cuts a little bit, just 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 a little, just a little, just a little. Just a little. So 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 right, and and I feel that in talking about the darkness, you have to kind of infuse some of that in it, um, if only because I think at the end of the day, despite all of the foolishness that that happens in our lives generally, you know, whether it's at the personal level or at the political level, we still have a kind of buoyancy to us here in Trinidad. At least we're still striving to hold on to that buoyancy and I wanted the I wanted the stories to reflect that buoyancy. And yeah, so that that's uh, you kind of touch on the next question I was going to ask you. Uh, the use of a uh, new media, the use of uh, uh, blogging and so on. How do all of these things come together in your fiction? Because you are a very, very modern uh, writer in that sense. You blog? Yes, I do. Yes. Constantly on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Prof again, some two in there. Prof again. <laughs> um, how does it all come? It's kind. Of, it's hard to kind of. Okay, that's okay, a tough let, one. Let me give you a and, and, and in your last story, the same one you spoke about, uh, definitely is different from uh, the earlier stories. And I think what makes it different is because of um, uh, the style you have used that and brings in everything, email and, and Facebook and so on. What's up? All of that in, uh, inside that story, and so that I see the trajectory of your uh, development 
are gradually moving, taking you along the same trajectory that the society is going through, and you are capitalizing on all of that. In yes. Your okay. Vision. Correct. So I am capitalizing on all of it, and I suppose the reason that I've started shifting in that way and incorporating those techniques is that that's how we're telling our stories now. That's how people are telling their stories. Oftentimes, you you, you log on to Facebook. Sometimes just to read a thread, and the thread in and of itself tells a story. And I feel that that's how we have become, uh, that's how we've started um, curating and chronicling our lives via posts and comments and, and likes and, and, and Insta flam and, and, and all of those things. And so I felt that, be especially because it's become so wildly popular in Trinidad, the use of social media for just about everything that I needed to start to incorporate that. Um, and I also felt that the, the way in which um, social media commenting works kind of helps, it, it, it also adds that level of punchiness, right? And, and, and currentness, like immediacy to the writing. And there was one other thing I wanted to see and it, it has slipped entirely out of my head now about social media and its impact on yeah, I'm sure it will, but when I'm off the stage. But yeah, so that's why I used it, because I felt, I felt that it, it added that level of urgency and immediacy that you, that you get when you're here. Well, this is supposed to be a conversation, not just between the two of us. Uh, we would like to get uh, questions from the floor, so that um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I see Vladimir's hand up already, so we should give him the mic. 